Hey Witchy friends! So welcome back to my second video. Uh, today a few people have sent a request that I do a video on sigils. What are sigils, how to make sigils, and who wants sigils and who's got sigils. <laughs> a sigil, quite simply, is just a symbol. Um, a symbol that's made from f f f phrases, words, um, ideas, um, some people use the sigil number grid and the letter grid like I use. Some people free draw their sigils and they look freaking amazing. And I just, I don't have that ability to freehand sigils. Um, but if you're an artist and that's what you feel com more comfortable doing, go for it. There are a million and five different ways to make sigils. Figure out what works best for you or figure out a new way that no one else has thought of. A sigil is quite simply uh, a symbolic representation of the practitioner's desired outcome. So when you're making your sigils, you need to not just think about what it looks like. You also need to be focusing in on your intention. What is the purpose of the sigil? Why did you make this sigil? One thing that I like to do before I sit down and my, I make my sigils <clears throat> is I like to sit there. I light um, my candles and I just sit there and I meditate because I want to try to clear my mind of any outsource or outside static. Uh, that's just how I refer to it or outside ringing because I get that a lot. Um, and you just want to be able to make sure that when you're making your sigils, you can home in and really, really, really concentrate on what you're doing. Now, I know that's not for everybody. That's just simply how I do it because I know certain people, uh, certain practitioners who actually draw their sigils while they're in a trance or while they're meditating and they're not even looking. And it is absolutely magnificent. So let's talk about the letter grid. And the Saturn uh, number grid. Sorry, this is letter grid. <laughs> I was trying to make this video without messing anything up, but y'all know me. I'm not trying to be hiding anything. Uh, you have your letter grid, and then you have your sigil number grid. Saturn number grid. Oh my goodness. What is wrong with me today? So let's talk about the letter grid. So as you see it, it has every letter in a block, A to Z. And you have one through nine at the top right here. So that, the way I do it at least, that stays the same. That never changes. Um, and you take your letters and you, let me get it in frame. You take your letters of whatever your word or your phrase is and you circle it. And then when you come down to here after you have your letters, you correspond to which column has a number. And then you come down here to the Saturn number grid. <laughs> Uh, this, as long as it, for me, how I do it at least, as long as it's within this space, these blocks right here, you're fine. These numbers can go in any order. In fact, when you do it in a different order, you get a different sigil, no matter uh, if you're using the same um, word, phrases. And it could be a really great way to reactivate and recharge your sigils. Because after a while, it is important to um, change up your sigil, especially if it's for protection and stuff like that. Um... I don't normally just go out showing off my sigils because I feel like that, you know, give away certain secrets of what you're using for protection. I don't recommend anyone give away, like if you have advice on what people can use for um, for protection and stuff like that, that's great. But <clears throat> even if someone gives you an idea of how to do some protection, change it up just a little bit because you want to be able to put your own intentions in it. You want to put your own little zhizh on it you want to make sure that it's as complementary to you and your practice as possible that way because it's um depends on who you ask some practitioners think that if you give away your protection and how you do it people can get around it i kind of believe the same thing so always make sure that everything you do is somehow altered to your intention to your desired outcome so for the first phrase we're going to start out with, it's actually the first sigil I, I ever made uh, a while back, uh, and it's My Spells Manifest. So what I do is I go through and I cross out A, E, I, O, U, and Y. 
the reason why I go through and I mark out the vi vowels is because it shortens the phrase and makes it a little less complicated to connect the lines. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go through and I'm going to cross out all the vowels and all the repeating letters, but leaving the first letter. I'll show you. <laughs> Once I have marked out all the re all the vowels and the repeating letters, see this had a two L, so I marked out the second L. That leaves us with M S P L M N F T. Give me a round of applause. I'm dyslexic and I read that backwards. Like y'all say magic's not real. Okay. <laughs> So what we're going to do next is we're going to take the letters that we have left, these letters right here underlined, and I'm going to circle them on this map. And I accidentally forgot to mark out the second M. So what we have is I went through and I circled where they land. Now we're going to look up to where they're circled and we're going to correspond them to the number that is above them. Okay, so now we have it corresponded. So the first letter is M. M is right here and it goes to four. And then you have S goes to one, P goes to seven, uh, L goes to three, and so on and so forth. Next, we're just going to simply cross uh, references to this line and we're gonna start drawing our lines. Next, we're gonna simply take these numbers and we're gonna put it on this grid. So what you do is you start out with a O and then you just connect the line so we start with four so we're gonna go zero uh, and O and then we're gonna go to our next one we have one so we're gonna see where the one is it's down here so we're gonna draw a line <clears throat> excuse me okay so we got our one so we're gonna go to our seven we're gonna go like that then we're gonna go to our three boom <laughs> And then we're going to go to our five. Oh no, sorry, we, we already went to that. We had to go back to our five. So what we do here, and for any letters that ha are numbers that have to cross over themselves, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a line, you're gonna draw a little C or circle right there, half circle right there. You're gonna go back over to five, and then check that off so you don't get lost. And then you go to six, Check that off, and then you gotta go to two, and then you have finished your sigil, and then you finish it off with a line like that. And then you just simply transpose it over to the side of the piece of paper so you can see it without the letters and numbers in the way. <laughs> Ignore this and I messed up on this one. This is basically what you have. And from here, you, it could be completely fine, and you could go about your business, and this could be your sigil. Or you could add some decoration to it, something that if it doesn't feel uh, visually appealing to you, or you don't feel like a connection, or you feel like it's missing some stuff, go ahead and add stuff. Like if you want to add some, like this one is for manifestation. So that this, to, in my dyslexic brain... Tells me that what we want is right, uh, what we're doing is right here. Our outcome is right here. But the journey to get to it may not be what we expected. So that to me, this speaks beautifully to me. That That is my sigil. Um, it's not my original sigil like that. Simply because I do change the numbers up with the sigil, uh, number sigil uh, grid right here. Right here. <laughs> And anytime you're making sigils or you're doing manifestations, always make sure your intention is clear. Also, make sure you're not talking in hopefully I'll get it kind of tense. Don't put um, things like um, my spells can manifest. No, your spells will manifest. Um, I need $500. You don't need $500, you have $500. You wanna make sure that your mind and your intention is set as if you already have it. Therefore, there's no confusion. It's yours. Uh, like I said, when he goes back to this, this may not be visually ple pleasing to some people, but for me and my dyslexic brain, this makes sense because I can make sense out of this. This is where we're at, this is our outcome. As we manifest it, it may not always go the direct path that we think it should go, but 
our outcome is still here. It may take some while to get there, or we might have some unexpected turns and tossles through the way, but it's there. That's why I say, that's why I tell people when you're doing spell work, and if you're specifically wanting something, make sure you really, really want, especially if it's certain things, make sure it's something you really, really want, because just because you want the outcome does not mean we know what the in-between is going to look like. The in-between could look crazy as hell. 50 people could get hurt in the meanwhile. Is that worth it to you? So that that's what I try to keep in mind, and that's what I try to tell others. Everyone practices different. Everyone's practice is valid. This is just simply how I practice. The second and last, um, like, how to do it example is this one. We are in desperate need of a car. Um, so I put the car is mine. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go through and we're going to mark out all the vowels E, E, I, O, U, N, Y. And we're going to mark out if there's any repeating letters. And after you cross out the repeating letters and the vowels, you're left with T, H, C, R. I couldn't read it. R, S, M, M. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to go through and I'm going to correspond that to the letter grid. And we're going to see what numbers it lines up with. Once we have our numbers corresponded to the letter, that leaves us with 2839145. Y'all, I am doing great today. Dyslexia is not messing me up today. <laughs> so now, we're going to just simply take these numbers, <clears throat> and we're going to add it to the thing. Let's see how it turns out. So you can't see it, but we're starting out with two over here. It's right beside the eight, so we're going to start with our circle. Then we're going to find where eight is, and we're going to go down. Then we're going to mark them off as we go so we don't get I don't get lost. So we're going to go up to three. We're going to find nine, and nine is right there. We're going to find one. One is directly down. Then four. And lastly, five. And we're going to end it with a line. And there is our sigil right here. So after you have your sigil... So after you have your sigils done, what do you do? Well, for me, like I said, everyone's different. And you can, uh, but you do need to activate them. So you can activate with crystals. You can activate under the charging under the moon. Um, burning, burning is how I personally do it. And what I do is I get bay leaves. Bay leaves are great for manifestation. Um, they're great for all kinds of things. Um, so what we do is I, and if you don't have bay leaves, a good uh, alternative is actually go outside and get a leaf off the tree um, from nature. Make sure you ask first and um, then um, take the leaf and you draw your sigil on it. Uh, if it's dried out, you could burn it more easily. If it is not dried out, I would say um, if you have a dehydrator, pop a dehydrator for a few hours or pop it in the oven in the middle rack your oven at the lowest setting on a baking sheet for like 20 to 30 minutes um and make sure you keep it out so it doesn't scorch or burn because <laughs> we don't want any fire hazards today then you're going to pick a pen a marker um whatever you're going to use for me i like to use markers and i like to use color correspondence to me gold means uh wealth it means uh security it means um like fortune stuff like that so that's what we want because we need this car and we want our spells to manifest so what we're going to do we're going to go ahead and we're going to draw it on the um both sides now that we have our sigils on our bay leaf so what we're going to do what i would do next is like i said you can charge many different ways and activate many different ways what i like to do is I like to home in on my intention and what these sigils personally mean to me i will individually put them in a cauldron and i will burn them and um, the ashes I of the just the Baileys I return to the earth the next day. Um, I after because the, there'll be a complete powder so, like incense. So what I do is I burn them and then I go out the next day after they set on my altar um, overnight and I will simply just um, take the ashes, go outside, ground myself, and then just let the wind take them away if it's a really windy day. Or I will simply just blow them with my intentions and blow it out to the universe and i simply thank the universe for what it's 
already given me and what it's going to give me because you want to make sure you're talking in a way and thinking in a way as if you already have these things. Um, and uh, then I will I do write them down in a little notepad. That way I know what their purposes was. Um, I don't use sigils, um, reuse them too often because um, I do like to constantly change them and make them a little bit different. <laughs> so that's that's just what I do. Um, and that's how you make sigils. That's a little bit of what sigils are. I do recommend everyone doing their own research. Um, not that I'm giving y'all any bad information, but I just think it's important for everyone to do their own research. Um, what you learn from me or what you learn from any other practitioner or any other witchy friend is a, a great starting point. Because you do have to realize that everyone's practice is a little bit different. Even though if there's a million and five similarities between our crafts, does not mean that we have the same craft. Because I don't believe that anyone has the same one craft. Because everyone is different. Everyone has different energy. And everyone has different intentions. So make sure you're doing your own research. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, uh, I feel like... Uh, like a call center. If you have any calls, questions, or concerns, please call the number down below. <laughs> but anyways, always with your friends. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please comment or send me a direct message. Um, don't forget to check out my Etsy store. I did just do these charm pillars. I, I make them for myself, but I do not think that anyone would really be interested in them. Um, they're for protection and they're for um, healing. Um, I don't sleep with mine like this. I sleep with mine underneath my um, body pillow. I have a pregnancy pillow. It's amazing. If you want to really treat yourself, go out and buy a pregnancy pillow. Oh my gosh. It's a giant C and it just, oh, I feel like I'm in a uterus again. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know what's wrong with me. But anyway, I have these, this one. I'm very weird, and I like it. Plus, these are upholstery fabric, so these are going to stand up a little bit better. I did just sell one yesterday, so I don't have those anymore. No but I do, ooh, I do have these, and these are this one is eucalyptus mint, and they're honeycomb wax melts, and they come in sets of three. This one actually has a bee on it, and. They're little surprises. The surprise is not what the smell is, because that's up front. I don't like it when people are like, surprise, guess what the smell is? No, give me, tell me what the smell is, because if I don't like it, I will throw up. <laughs> but um, the surprise is once they start melting, there's little things inside. Um, some crystals, some shells, some charms, stuff like that. So I have them for a set of three for $15. Um, that one is eucalyptus mint. Um, <laughs> the computer screen went off. This one is pheromone. And this one, this one actually has the organic chemical compound of um, of actual human pheromone. So these are great for if you have um, want to do a love spell or you want to do a self-love spell. That, that's perfect. That's great. And then I also have lemongrass. And each individual comes... And these little baggies and these baggies the reason why i package them like this is because i always want to try to give back things that y'all can reuse in your practice these after you get done after you put one of these in your wax melters take this don't throw it away you can use this um put some lemongrass some rosemary some bay leaf some basil um and carry it around your purse and it's or hang it up in your car it's great for protection it's great for um um lifting up your spirits also even if uh, you're a skeptic out there and you don't believe in magic or whatever, um, like aromatherapy is a real thing. Um, I actually keep this vessel around my neck and I have rosemary in it right now, essential oil. And whenever I'm feeling overwhelmed or stressed, I just simply, especially in public, I just smell it and it takes me out of my own mind and I'm able to say, okay, this is just an emotion. I'm just feeling overwhelmed. I'm fine. Um, and then... Uh, we have four cents right now. Four cents, yeah, four cents right now. So I went through those, and this one is, I really don't like the name, but because it, it's so cheesy, but I love it. This one's purple, and this they all have um, the, the inside mystery. Um, but this one is su Spring Sunshine Love, or something like that. I, I have a thing right here. Let me see what it says. 
Warm spring sunshine. <laughs> Dude, I really feel like I could be on QVC. I don't know if I'd actually sell anything to anyone because I, I don't know if I'm good at selling stuff, but, uh, or convincing, because I don't want to, I don't like that, convincing someone to buy something. It's like, if you like it, you like it. If you don't, cool beans, bro. <laughs> but um, those are some of the things I have in my shop. Of course, y'all know I always have my scrying mirrors that I like to make. It's a little dusty because I was doing uh, making some wands, so I have to make sure they're clean and stuff like that. But if you have, any, like I said, any comments, questions, or concerns, or any questions about any product I have, um, please message me. Feel free. As long as I see your message, I will always message back. Because um, you went, out, took the time out of your day, and you sought me out and messaged me. And who am I to think I'm any better or to think that your question is not worth answering? So message me. We can be friends. Uh, join the Witchy Discord. Um, I have my Etsy store linked on my YouTube. I also have um, the Minecraft server. <laughs> um, so there's ever-changing, always things adding to my shop. Um, if you have anything in particular that you see on my shop but you want it uh, done specifically for you, let me know. I could take a custom order um, and let you know what the prices are from that. Um, but thank you all so much for all the love, support, commenting, sharing, messaging me, all the words of encouragement, I, I, and all the positive feedback from my shop. I appreciate you all so much. Um, and as always with you, friends, have a great day. Don't let the bastards get you down. And blessed be. <laughs> Bye.